This can also be seen with all these YouTube channels that cater exactly to such a new Luddite audience. And since these channels attract technophobe people, quite often of a highly aggressive character. Yes, that's right. Apparently, you've been attracted here because you're an angry technophobe who hates science. Meet Jixuan and Sebastian. Previously, I systematically eviscerated their scientifically illiterate video trying to defend the Hyperloop. Now they're back. Not to argue facts or scientific understanding or anything, but to say that everyone who disagrees with them, or with Musk, is poorly evolved. If only I were joking. Technology, a good thing normally, right? I mean, advances in technology gave us some pretty neat things over the course of history. It certainly has. It means that we no longer have to worry greatly about starvation in winter or infant mortality. It's given us some marvelous things, smartphones, MRI scanners, all things kind of curiously missing from my busted series. From antibiotics to long distance communication to airplanes to computers. So people should be pretty happy that new technology breakthroughs will make our lives even better in the future. Whoa, did you really just voice over a section about a car driving through a tunnel as that new technology breakthroughs will make our lives even better in the future? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hate to rain on your parade, but I'm, I'm pretty sure tunnels aren't a new technology breakthrough. But I think they've been around about as long as wheels. Starship, for example, allowing us to settle on the moon or Mars. Uh, stop right there. We seem to have made the transition from things that are real, you know, like planes, computers, that sort of thing, to things that exist only in computer-generated graphics. But even if it were real, it's a rocket. It's not a revolutionary or breakthrough technology. It's got all of the intrinsic problems that rockets have had for the last hundred or so years. Things that I go into detail in this video. Look, the technology to get to the moon is some 50 years old. And for most of the remaining 40 years, I've been listening to empty promises about things like space station freedom and moon bases and trips to Mars. And in America, that's given rise to calls for NASA to be given the cash to throw themselves into a new space race, the race to Mars. Landing a man on Mars means first building a station in space, and that's already an American goal. Tonight, I am directing NASA to develop a permanently manned space station and to do it within a decade. First for the coming decade, for the 1990s, space station freedom. I mean, we all remember space station freedom. Right? Our critical next step in all our space endeavors. And, and next for the new century, back to the moon, back to the future, and this time back to stay. Yeah, I mean, the promises of moon bases have been floating around since we first landed on the moon. And then a journey into tomorrow, a journey to another planet, a manned mission to Mars. It is time for America to take the next steps. Today, I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. We will begin the effort quickly. Our second goal is to develop and test a new spacecraft, the Crew Exploration Vehicle, by 2008 and to conduct the first manned mission no later than 2014. But the main purpose of this spacecraft will be to carry astronauts beyond our orbit to other worlds. Our third goal is to return to the moon by 2020 as the launching point for missions beyond. Beginning no later than 2008, we will send a series of robotic missions to the lunar surface to research and prepare. With the experience and knowledge gained on the moon, we will then be ready to take the next steps of space exploration, human missions to Mars, and to worlds beyond. Yeah, that sounds expensive. Sounds like the sort of thing you'd need a lot of money for. 
And today, yes, we are. The U.S. is the richest nation on earth with the most powerful economy in the world. There you go, Jigs One. You don't have to fantasize with computer generated graphics about landing on the moon and moon bases. If promises were technology, we already did it 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, that's right, we didn't. And the vapid promises now are much less credible than they were then. Because this time, they're not being made by a, the richest country on the earth, by an organization with a budget of 20 odd billion per year, but by some guy making fabulous promises that he's going to make rocketry, an established field about as old as plane flight, a hundred times cheaper. Yeah, promise about as credible as saying that you're just going to revolutionize plane flight such that rather than a transatlantic plane flight costing a thousand dollars, it's going to cost ten dollars. Further, he's got form for claiming to make things hundreds and thousands of times cheaper, but then curiously never delivers on this. If only there were a word to describe such a person. I'm a Zooming around the planet in my Hyperloop pond. Or Hyperloop enabling super fast land travel. <laughs> Fantastic. If you thought the building moon bases was over promising, the Hyperloop's been promising that stuff, not just for 30 years, but for about a hundred years. So people should be really happy about such advances, right? Oh, what new technologies? Tunnels are nothing new. Rockets, especially computer generated rockets, are nothing new. And the Hyperloop is just a hundred year old corpse of an idea that Elon Musk dug up and told a, a whole new generation of rubes dumb enough to buy land when the tide is out. That it was a brand new revolutionary idea. I guess in many ways your question really ought to be, why do gullible people really like people telling them comfortable lies? <laughs> So let's analyze what the reasons could be for people to hate new technologies. Yeah, there weren't any new technologies there, but hey, whatever, let's see what you got. A group emerged that was calling themselves Luddites. And what was their movement about? Well, the working conditions in the textile factories of that time weren't really good. In fact, they were really bad. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect would enable much less skilled and thus cheaper workers to replace them, which they of course understandably didn't like. So what did they do? Well, they started to break the weaving machines. Yeah, I'm still not getting you here. Uh, so you're saying that the reason Reagan didn't get his moon base is because there were a load of people with really bad working conditions who were afraid that a moon-based economy would destroy their jobs? So they sabotaged the moon rockets? Yeah, you know, I think I remember that. What started as some random distraction became a larger movement, where the Luddites destroyed lots of textile machinery and even fought the British army. Okay, nice history. But what does this have to do with new technologies? Well, the term Luddite has now become synonymous with the opposition of new technologies. What? You mean new technologies like the... Tunnel? The same way that the Luddites tried to fight the changing times and the emergence of automation, modern day Luddites dislike new technological development. Thus, the term Neo Luddite emerged for describing this modern day phenomenon of hate towards new technological development. And as we on this channel deal basically only with new breakthrough technologies. Yes, new technologies like computer rendered fantasies. But then why do, for example, quite a few people seem to hate SpaceX or the Starship? Yes, of course, it's down to emotion and hate and nothing to do with uh, reasoned arguments. Of course, Elon Musk said it. Why wouldn't you believe it? Of course, he's going to be flying Starship like an airliner in about a year's time. No backups, no failsafes. Every single time, just one engine doesn't relight properly. And when does Musk expect to have all the bugs worked out of the system and people flying on these rockets around the world like planes? Uh, next year, 2022, 2023 maybe? Why would anyone hate Elon Musk so much as to make videos all the time about any of his endeavors in order to try to prove that they are all a bunch of lies? Well, maybe because they are all a bunch of lies? 
What, what this is really all about is advancing the state of transportation, trying new things that have never been done before. Work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, I read that too. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transports. Were you going to plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any thoughts of, of your own on this matter? I, I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop. But do you, is that your thing? You come into a bar, you read some obscure passage, and then pretend you, you pawn it off as your own as your own idea just to impress some girls? It's called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop. Why would anyone try to prove that Starship the most revolutionary development in spaceflight is supposedly all false claims. Because they are all false claims? In fact, a cynical man might suggest that you know damn well those videos are pretty much spot on the money. Because if they were so easy to debunk, why didn't you just debunk them? Instead, for some strange reason, you're sat here speculating about his motives. Why would anyone hate on a potentially breakthrough transportation concept such as Hyperloop so much as to dedicate a large portion of his life trying to prove that it's all a bunch of lies? Uh, because it is all a bunch of lies? As for spending a large portion of my life doing this, I don't think you appreciate that Elon Musk is just one of the people who I've debunked on this channel. One of many. I also don't think you fully appreciate that I'm a research active scientist who in the next week or so will have another publication on how you can taste quantum nuclear effects. Yeah, stay tuned for that one. Should have the video up hopefully next week. In order to understand why the hate or exaggerated skepticism towards new technological development is absolutely real. Nah, folks, they're absolutely right. If it weren't for neo-Luddites like me, you would all be driving around in thorium-powered cars on solar roadways, drinking your powdered alcohol with more plastic from the air and hoverboards and triton artificial gills that allow you to just breathe underwater like you're a fish or you'd be flying on nuclear-powered airliners and you'd be getting your water from the desert air with electromagnetic drives that'll get you to Mars in like two hours or with spinning solar and energy healing. Yeah, no, you, you would be doing really, really well. All these things are completely possible. The only thing that stops people from living without eating for nine years is neo-Luddites. Yeah, just, just because they hate technology. If they didn't hate technology, all of these things would be so easy. In order to understand why the hate or exaggerated skepticism towards new technological development is absolutely real, we must do a bit of evolutionary psychology. Oh, you could just do a bit of science and show that it actually works. Oh, oh wait. Hang on, no, you tried that, didn't you? And in order to show that the Hyperloop was possible, uh, you managed to come to the conclusion that hot things don't expand on hot days and contract on cold ones. Now, how this actually would work is that, of course, we would see many temperature fluctuations along the entire length of the Hyperloop, meaning the Hyperloop would contract, expand, contract, expand, contract, expand, and so on and so forth along the entire length. Therefore, in reality, the length contractions and expansions would just on average cancel each other out along the way. Bravo. Yes, having seen how well it worked out when you actually try to uh, demonstrate your points using um, uh, science, I think I can now see why you're grasping at straws as trying to diagnose anyone who disagrees with you as crazy using evolutionary psychology. I wonder whether this will work out any better for you. All right, we call it a draw. We have to understand that humans are a creature of habit. If you look at human evolution for the longest time in our history, there was almost no change whatsoever over the entirety of a human lifespan. Yeah, here we're going to take a look at Chick One's amazing ability to look at a situation and come to the exact wrong conclusion. The tools he was using would still be exactly the same. The tribe with whom he or she lived would still be in outside appearance and culture the same. 
Therefore, our brains are evolved such as to be very much adapted to slow changes, but very badly adapted to fast changes. Which is just complete bollocks. Look, when you take a kid from one culture to another culture, they adapt to it very quickly. They learn languages very quickly. But that can't be right. Chick Swan was just telling me that their brains have evolved to see almost no change ever. So how come all of a sudden they're almost infinitely flexible to change? <laughs> Likewise, new technology comes along, like say for instance, mobile phones. Was everyone completely unable to adapt to mobile phones or did they just adopt them like it was nothing? However, as now we live in a world of accelerating technological development, changes are happening faster and faster. Yes, which is why when mobile phones came along, I got a mobile phone. And then when smartphones came along, I got a smartphone. Yeah, I'm not entirely certain this uh, evolutionary psychology is telling you what you think it's telling you. In this case, the Tesla is being channeled as the object of hate, but the hate is really towards change and the fear that they are being left behind. But the hate is really towards change and the fear that they are being left behind. Wow, okay, so someone getting their car keyed isn't because they've been a, a jerk, say for instance, or because someone is a jerk and is jealous of someone's really expensive car. Nah, it's because they're afraid of change. Of course, a dislike for changing their own old ways and their habits which, as we saw, the human brain is really not well adapted for due to millions of years of evolution. Yes, of course, it's all down to millions of years of evolution. That's why people who don't like Teslas never carry smartphones because they just hate change. It's the result of millions of years of evolution. This is why the exact same people who can be seen kicking these cars here are notorious for burning down Apple stores. You remember all those Neo-Luddites burning down Apple stores, right? You know, because millions of years of evolution made their brains incapable of handling change. But we can also see this in how the media is portraying visionaries such as Elon Musk. This guy basically wants to change the world in a quite profound way. Cool, so just like Elizabeth Holmes, who was also a billionaire visionary, who wanted to change the world in profound ways. It is thus clear that technophobes will really hate him. Yes, although I'm not quite so sure how you know that, because a technophobe wouldn't use a computer now, would they? So tell me again how you know technophobes hate Musk. We can see headlines portraying him as a totally crazy and ruthless billionaire who would not hesitate to sacrifice people's lives for his insane endeavors. Well, let's see what we got. American total deaths are currently just over half a million. Uh, May 6th, uh, the coronavirus pandemic is dumb. At age 12, about three weeks later, he's saying based on current trends, probably close to zero new cases in US by end of April. And then, because a month later things are going so well, he decides that now is the time for him to reopen his plant, asking only if anyone get arrested, it should be him. This can also be seen with all these YouTube channels that cater exactly to such a neo-Luddite audience. Boom, there you go, you see. It's not just me who is a neo-Luddite who uh, hates technology. Although, curiously, my technophobia didn't stop me from working for about 30 years in a nuclear reactor and another 20 or so with supercomputers. Yeah, apparently I just can't stand change for some reason. That's why I'm so threatened by um, solar roadways. That cater exactly to such a neo-Luddite audience. And yes, apparently you're a neo-Luddite audience who just hate technology because your brain just can't handle change, which is why none of you are using a computer to browse the internet or a mobile device or any of that stuff. And since these channels attract technophobe people, quite often of a highly aggressive character, as we ourselves had to find out, and not so entirely certain that's an accurate representation of what happened. 
think a little more accurate representation would be is I, I showed why the Hyperloop was bullshit. You put up a video saying that I'd made all these mistakes and I went through all of your claims and absolutely eviscerated them point by point. If I had got it wrong, I suspect your video would have been on the actual facts. Instead, the only card you brought to this fight is and since these channels attract technophobe people, quite often of a highly aggressive character. But Thunderfoot's emotional and just hates things. Don't get me wrong, it's the best argument that you've made so far. Just not very convincing to people who care about things like um, facts. Let's just say, for instance, take your beloved white paper. As we said before, on page 54, section 4.5.2, it is written, The white paper, the white paper, all glory, glory to the glory, white glory. paper, which you seem to think doesn't contain any errors. I went through and showed that they use 300 kilos of water for cooling, and that's going to make about 300 cubic meters of steam, which just to store that, uh, 300 cubic meters of steam would be a volume about mm, 10 times the size of their Hyperloop pods. Why don't you just address that as a single point? I mean, because ignoring the fact that virtually everything in the white paper has been jettisoned by anyone seriously looking at the Hyperloop. The blueprints are pretty complicated. Well, blueprints are always kind of complicated. And I mean, yes, there's math. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> Two years later. So I'd probably advocate um, wheels. And, and only delusional crazies with no real understanding of physics still quote it. That single fact there kills the white paper dead. They will cheer every time a new video is being made on why this or that invention of Elon Musk certainly won't work and why it is doomed to fail. But it's not just Elon Musk, is it? I mean, Elon Musk, it turns out, is only the fourth billionaire who I've called out on bullshit like this. Of course, there was Richard Branson with his uh, Virgin Hyperloop Mega Center or whatever it was. There was the free electric guy, Elizabeth Holmes. And yeah, also Elon Musk. You know, if only there were some sort of 10-year track record that people could judge me on my ability to call out scams on. I wonder what that would look like. You can imagine how much it hurts me to use the word infallible. Oh, come on. Nobody's infallible. All right, then he's not infallible. It's just that up to now, he has never failed. But of course, this modern-day phenomenon of hate towards new technologies cannot only be explained by evolution. There is another component at work here. Of course there is. Fact and science. For a second there, I thought you were a complete bunch of nutters just making some appeal to emotion. Oh, oh, sorry, what? There is another component at work here. A worldview. Do you have a positive or a negative worldview? Do you think that we live in an amazing and fascinating time or in a really bad time? This is a highly subjective experience. Yes, which is why in science we tend to focus on facts and things you can actually demonstrate. Your feelings really don't come into it. And varies wildly from person to person, based on the circumstances under which a person grew up. And if the person had more positive experiences in his or her life, or more negative ones. Sorry, how is any of this going to solve your expansion problem on the Hyperloop? And how these experiences affected the person, of course. It can thus be said that people that welcome technological breakthroughs and technological changes have a more positive worldview. I see, so people who welcome all these brilliant technological advances like solar roadways and oh the microwave for cooling i wonder how that's getting on raised about a third of a million dollars a year ago they must have made some real progress from this amazing looking prototype i mean just look at how sleek and elegant it is let's take a look at their latest update shall we oh after a year of progress um 
Well, maybe if we're more optimistic and have an enthusiastic worldview where we embrace new technology, it'll suddenly turn into a microwave for cooling. You just just have to be optimistic, people. You you have to you have to believe. Now let us take a look what the white paper has to say about this. The white paper. All oh, praise to the white paper. Many people, for example, hate Hyperloop because they say high-speed rail should be totally enough. Why do we need this Hyperloop if we have high-speed rail? Actually, I think you'll find in America the main argument isn't oh, why do we need a Hyperloop if we've got high-speed rail. It's we can't even build high-speed rail. Why are we even talking about building a Hyperloop? But even ignoring that, Actually, I think you'll find the arguments more along the lines that even if you could build a Hyperloop, which let's be real is just a, a maglev in a vacuum tube, it's going to be at least as expensive to build as a maglev. It's going to be at least as slow to build as a maglev. But of course, it's going to be hundreds of times more expensive to build, hundreds of times more difficult to maintain, and hundreds of times more dangerous for maybe at best a factor of two in speed over high speed rail. I guess it's it's kind of like saying, why do we bother building bridges when we could all just drive Batmobiles? She was built as a bridging vehicle. And wondering why everyone looks at you like you've lost your meds. But funny that these people forget that trains were once quite hated upon. Well, firstly, I'm not so sure that's true. But even if it were, you know what? When they were hated on, at least they existed and did something. Hyperloop doesn't exist and is never likely to exist because it's no more practical to build one now than it was when it was first proposed about a hundred years ago. And people back then were saying, why do we need those stupid trains? We have horses. And a lot of people said when jetpacks first came out, why do we need jetpacks when cars work just fine? And now everyone is traveling around by personal jetpack. Oh no, wait, that didn't happen because that would be insanely dangerous and insanely expensive. Even if it were proposed by, say, for instance, a billionaire who just wants to make people's lives better. So in the end, the worldview and the adaptability of a person to change will determine if that person hates new technologies or if this person embraces them. Wow, that's amazing. So if someone uses new technologies, like say, for instance, the internet or mobile phones, and that person has an adaptable brain and a positive outlook. Oh, hang on, wait, no, that's everyone. Of course, we should have a healthy dose of skepticism and not just blindly embrace all new technologies without carefully analyzing the dangers which they might bring. Wow, that's exactly what I do. But for some reason, you had me labeled as a neo-Luddite preaching to technophobes who just hate new technology or something. A person with a positive worldview, mentally balanced, with a high degree of empathy and that has a high degree of adaptability, will be very, very unlikely to scratch your Tesla with a key. Whereas a person with a negative worldview, quite possibly in combination with a low degree of empathy and a low degree of adaptability, will be much more likely to do so. Look, I love the appeal to emotion and how anyone who agrees with you is optimistic and evolutionarily superior, whilst anyone who is critical of you or Musk or new technologies is just angry and evolutionary inferior, a subhuman with a low degree of empathy and adaptability. Yeah, if only there was some impartial way to work out who is right that doesn't involve how you feel. Look, let me make this clear. They might have laughed at Galileo. They might have laughed at Copernicus. But they also laughed at Bozo the Clown. And you know what the best way to work out whether you're laughing at Copernicus or Bozo the Clown is? To look at the facts. Something that is entirely absent from your entire video. Yeah, so on that mic drop moment, uh, thumbs up for the uh, neo-Luddite technophobe research scientist who occasionally does the odd experiment in a nuclear reactor.
make sure to hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on finding out how you can taste quantum nuclear effects. Uh, you can always support through Patreon if you really enjoy this work. And as ever, thanks for watching.